Okay, in this video, uh, we're going to look at how we can compare two group means. And we're going to compare two group means with uh, data that isn't already you know, separated in groups. So this is just a sample set of data that uh, a class of mine collected with a survey. And you can see the, the questions at the top. This first one uh, asked a bunch of nurses how many years they've been working. The second one asked them how many hours on average uh, do you usually work uh, per week. The third one asked if they are mandated uh, to work overtime or not. And then the fourth one asked them their current level of nursing education, the different types of you know, ASN, BSN, etc. Now for the uh, module six discussion two part of our project and actually the uh, part five of your project, you need to be able to uh, compare two group means. So we're basically doing um, a two sample t-test. We're asking ourselves does the average of this group differ from the average of another group? And those two groups are going to be, you know, whatever your data is, it's going to be the two groups created by their answers to our dichotomous question. Question three, the yes-no question. Remember, yours doesn't have to be a yes-no. It just had to be a question that only had two responses. So it could have been like, dislike, yes, no, male, female, uh, whatever it was. It had to be a, a two-option question. And so with, with this data here, with this data set, and we have, if we scroll down, we can see we have 150 people who took this survey. In essence, what we're doing is we're taking all of these 150 people. Remember that one row represents one person. We're taking these 150 people and we're putting them in two groups. We're going, okay, people, all of you that answered no to the mandated question, you know, were you mandated to work overtime or not, you go stand on that side of the room. All you people who answered yes, you go stand on that side of the room. And then we're going to go to the no people and we're going to gather up all of your responses to one of our numerical questions. We can choose any numerical question we want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, choose the uh, years question just because there's going to be more variability. As you can see, these numbers are all roughly the, sim uh, roughly the same. You know, people are going to work close to 40 hours a week regardless of anything. So I'm going to use uh, how many years they've been working. And, and then we're going to go over to the other side of the room and look at how many years those people have all been working and we're going to get an average of each of those two groups and then we're basically going to use some statistics to see if those two groups differ on how many years they've been working. Now it's kind of a silly question because you think um, how would being mandated to work overtime or not have any influence on how many uh, years they've been working and they don't. It has, there's no influence whatsoever. It's a stupid question to analyze. Um, you know even if we do get a statistically significant result it really doesn't have any practical significance because we can see logically that one really doesn't um, influence the other. It would probably make more sense to test on um, average hours worked because if you're mandated to work overtime, that should have some influence on your average hours worked. You know, so if we really wanted to um, do something logical, that'd probably be the better one to do. This one's going to give us, I don't know, some fancier uh, graphs and stuff. So maybe I'll run both to show you guys uh, how it all works. Okay, some of the things that we're supposed to do with our data is um, we've done some graphs, right, where we do some pie charts with our data. And we can select the columns is is the data that we're you know kind of grouping, and then we can group by. Right? So what you guys probably did when when you did a pie chart is you just said, all right, I'm just going to look at uh, this. Uh, are you required or mandated to work overtime? I'm not going to group it at all, and I'm just going to run um, a pie chart on that and see what I get and you get this and you go okay so that tells me that I can visually see that my no group is a lot bigger than my yes group okay but what you can do with uh, these things is you can also group them by things so for instance we can do a pie chart with data we can look at um, their current level 
and we can group them by whether or not they're mandated. Compute that and see what we get here. What is your current level of um, nursing education? And you can see here is the distribution of, of the type of education they have. But this is just one of our two responses. You'll see there's a little arrow down here. We can go over the other one. Because these pie pieces represent only those people who answered no. You see how up here it says question three, blah, 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 equals no. So question four, what is your level of nursing? That's what these categories are. But these numbers, 40, 49, 28, if you, if you add them all up, you'll see that they don't add up to 150 because these are only the people who said no. Then we click over here. These are the people who said yes. And if you go back and forth, you can see that there's quite a difference between the two. And if you stuck those next to each other um, in a report, you could start to see the difference. Oh, the people answer yes, people answer no. They have uh, slightly different uh, you know, distributions on this thing. Well, we want to do kind of the same thing now, but with numerical uh, data. And we can't do a pie chart with numer numerical data because there'll just be too many slices because it'll do a different slice for every number, right? Every different type of number. And that'd be silly. So instead, what we want to do is a two sample t test and ask ourselves, do the two groups differ um, by their two sample t test? Now, there's two ways we can do this. We can first, in essence, uh, group our data. Right, we can go to uh, data sort, and we could sort all of our data, and we could sort it by yes and no, and then we could kind of run summary stats on those two uh, sorted things. That's a lot of steps, and and if you're good with Excel, you know how to sort in Excel, and you could do it that way, and then you could get the averages of the two groups that way, and and that would be fine. But we can actually let StatCrunch kind of do the work for us and instead we can do the summary stats which is where we get means and standard deviations and all that stuff. We're going to do it on the columns right because our data is in columns and we want to get summary stats you'll notice that it only lists these two because it only lists things that have numbers in them. Let's go ahead and do the uh, average hours work since it makes more sense to uh, line that up with our question three. So how many hours on average do you work? And then you'll notice this group by, right? Normally you guys just ignore this and go on down here and hit compute. And it just gives you the summary statistics for this variable, this question two, for all 150 people. But we don't want that. We want them by group. So we go back to here and we can group it by are you required or mandated right to work overtime and now if we compute you'll see that we get two rows there's 129 people that said no there are 21 people who said yes and then here are all of the summary statistics for those two groups we've got the the two means right the two standard deviations and then all these other extra things that we don't really need but if we're going to run a two sample t-test, all we really need are the means and the standard deviations. Okay, we could write these numbers down and then we can go back and run a two-sample t-test. So if you want to um, you know, do this either by hand with formulas or in a second step with StatCrunch, you're going to need uh, n, mean, and standard deviation. Right? You need to know the size of each group, the average of each group, and the standard deviation of each group. And because we don't know the standard deviations of the populations we're dealing with, i.e. all of the people and you know all nurses everywhere who would answer no to this question and versus all those everywhere who would answer yes, we don't know the standard deviation of all of them, um, we have to use a t-test. Okay, so now that we've uh, written down uh, the numbers that we need, we can go now calculate our t-test a two sample and because we have the results we do it with summary okay if I just move this out of the way we can see all our numbers right there okay sample number one it doesn't matter which one you want to be one which one you want to be two um, you just gotta keep track of them so sample number one I'm just gonna let be the first row so that's gonna be the people who said no 
they had an average of 35.131783. Tab down, they had a standard deviation of 9.4102503. Tab down, their sample size was 129. Okay, sample two, the yeses, they were 38.52. 381, next one 10.161786, their sample size 21. Okay, pull the variances. No, we don't want to pull the variances, right? When you pull the variances, that's when you assume that the variances of the two samples are the same, and we can see clearly they're not, you know, and it's usually a, a for most cases, it's not a good assumption to make. So we almost never pull variances. Okay, now we want to run a hypothesis test. We're, we're hypothesizing that the two means are different. And it's it um, this standard that it kind of defaults to is that mu1 minus mu2 equals 0. That means the two means are the same, right? Because if these numbers are the same, their difference would be 0. And then here we're just saying that their difference is not equal to zero, meaning that they are different. Now, if you thought maybe that uh, those who said yes um, would then have a higher mean, which would uh, they do, and it would make sense because if they're kind of mandated mandated to work overtime, they should have a higher uh, average uh, weekly number of hours worked. Then, because this was group two. And if group two was bigger, right, then one minus two should be a negative number, and you could actually set this to a one-tailed test and test for one group being bigger than the other. But we're going to leave it at the just the, the not equals two. Okay, and then we can go ahead and compute. And here are the results of our two sample t test. Here's the difference between the two groups, right? So that's our mu one minus mu two our standard error, our degrees of freedom. You'll notice that the degrees of freedom is not 20. I know the book talks about if you do this by hand, you take the smaller of the two, you do n minus one of the smaller of the two groups, so it would have been 20 if you were doing this by hand. This actually uses a complex algorithm to calculate the true degrees of freedom. Here is your test statistic, and then here is your p-value. Now the only reason why this is a negative test statistic is because we let this be group one and this be group two, so when you do the smaller, right, the 35 minus 38, you end up getting a negative difference, so a negative t. If you put them in in the opposite order, change them, which one was group 1 and which one was group 2, this would just be a positive 1.43292, and this p-value would still be the exact same thing. And we can see with that p-value, it's a pretty big p-value, that even if we set our alpha level to be 10%, this p is still bigger than alpha, right, and if the p-value is bigger than alpha, we fail to reject the null. So the data seems to support the null hypothesis, right? We failed to reject it. So it seems like the data supports the idea that the two means are actually the same. And we can say that the two groups don't differ, right? Those who said yes versus those who said no really don't have a statistically different amount of hours worked per week. Okay, that I think is the easiest way to do this in StatCrunch. You can actually do it um, in, in one full, full swoop. You don't have to do it in a two-step process like we did here. And for those of you that want to uh, see how that's done, you can hang out, and I'll show you in the next couple minutes of this video. The rest of you are probably like, I'm done. I'm going to go do it my own way. So let's show you how to do it in one fell swoop. Okay, so we're going to do a, a two-sample, right? We're doing a two-sample t-test with data. Okay, sample one. Where are my values for sample one? Well, we're still computing uh, the differences between the hours they work on average. So that's question two. And our sample two is also the same thing. They're question two. But we have to do this where. So this is like an if-then statement. So it's going to take all of the samples from the question two column, but only those samples that satisfy um, a certain criterion. And we're going to stay with um, uh, group one being those who said no. So group one are going to be all of those people where question three, you add that column, right, equals, 
and then you have to tell it what's it going to equal. Well, you put in um, quotes, no, end quote, and hit OK. And then we're going to do the same thing. This group are going to be those where question 3 equals quote yes and you'll recognize or realize that you see how I typed uh, capital because it has to match right these it's not smart enough to know that lowercase yes is the same thing as uppercase yes type of thing all right so fingers crossed this should work and look at that we get roughly the same thing Now, why do you think um, the numbers are slightly different? Look at the sample difference. Okay, the sample dis difference is still mu one minus mu two, and look at the two numbers; they're almost identical. Two o two six six. This is two o two seven. So this one's just been rounded. Okay, standard error. Quite a big difference there. I mean, it really isn't, but statistically, that's a pretty big difference. Okay, degrees of freedom here much bigger because we're now using all 150 things all at once rather than in two grouped samples, right? Uh, our t-stat also off, right, by substantial amount, and our p-value is off by a substantial amount. So what's really happening is um, when we run it as a two-step process, there's some rounding going on, right, because we did it in a two-step process. First, we took one group we ran the stats on that one group. We kind of wrote those numbers down, right? We didn't write, write them down, but we looked at them in this table, which they've been truncated, right? They've been rounded. All of these numbers now have been rounded. And then we're running statistics on something that's been rounded, whereas when we run it this way, the one in the middle, we're running it on the raw data and the only rounding that is happening is at the very end when it gives us the final solution so this is a more accurate solution but you can st still see that you get roughly the same answer um, both ways okay so either way would be fine um, this second way is a little bit more accurate uh, and it's it's still pretty easy to do so I would recommend doing it that way but you can do it this way too especially if you you know, kind of want to give some of the intermediate steps and, and talk about um, the, the numbers in each group because you have no idea the numbers of each group when you run it this way, right? Um, so you do get a little bit more um, information if you do it both ways, but you could also just do it both ways. Do the middle one here to get your most accurate results, and then you could go back and just run that summary statistics to get all the extra bits and pieces of data if you want that. Okay, so hopefully this will help you guys figure out how to do um, Module 6, Discussion 2, as well as the last part of your project. Yay, it's almost done. Project Part 5, where we're comparing the means of two different groups.